So is there life after death? Short answer, yes. Long answer, the current theory regarding the creation of the universe is the Big Bang in which the universe explodes from a particle smaller than a proton into our infinite and ever-expanding universe. Now throw into the mix Einstein's theory of E equals mc squared. In short, as per the Big Bang Theory and mass-energy equivalence, the universe should have originated from something smaller than a proton filled with the energy, the E in E equals mc squared, required to give us the right-hand side of the equation, the mc squared, after the Big Bang kaboomed. Obviously, the galaxies are continuing even today, in their trajectory away from each other, and possibly faster than light speed, as a result. Remember, the laws of physics as we know them were non-existent before the Big Bang. Picture that. No gravity, no time, nothing to touch, nothing to feel. All that exists is, well, nothing, said science. Trick question. Where did that primary energy source come from? That is, the energy from which the Big Bang gained traction, and the aftermath which continues to this day. Extra credit question. Who or what enabled the proton-like thingy to disseminate and become the mass or entity that resulted in the universe being what it is today, which includes us, with matter being constantly created and destroyed. Currently, all atoms are now known to be made of one of the known subatomic particles. So, why did it not just become one big glob in which all mass was concentrated? Or, more precisely, who or what put in place the templates that subatomic particles follow to become atoms, and why didn't the subatomic particles evolve like organisms? Any takers? So when we die, the mass that is our body and the atoms which currently comprise us, body, intellect, capacity to learn, worry, fear, complain, etc., will start to entropy and get back into circulation, if you know what I mean. Bear in mind, even while alive, the human body regenerates at an atomic level every so many years. So where's the hope for life after death? Could it be that since the primordial particle, the templates or motion of subatoms have remained the same, having been defined at the point of the Big Bang beginning of the universe, and haven't changed form since, and that after death, we, our consciousness included, would join back into the universe at an atomic level? However, this still begs the question of where did the initial spark or energy for the Big Bang come from? And who defined the templates or motion of the subatomic particles? So that subatoms in different bonding combinations create atoms of different elements after the Big Bang. What, from all we know from science, opposes the idea of an infinite, timeless, intellectual being, master of subatoms, master spark igniter, infinite energy reservoir possessor, and infinite knowledge possessor? If this thing, or being, was able to make the universe, then surely this thing or being has the capability to return the universe to itself. So, if all this is scheduled according to plan, and the universe is progressing according to this plan, though bodily death is certain for humans, it follows that it is also within the plan of the master spark igniter, and that thing slash being which created the universe surely created it gratuitously as nothing else yet existed to compel such an event. One could logically apply the purpose of goodwill because 
Man did not need to exist. The entire plan could have reached its climax with the shark, which, by the way, existed in its current form when dinosaurs roamed. Note that the coelacanth, a fish thought to have been extinct some 65 million years ago, was found alive in 1938. Crocodiles survived the crustaceous paleogene extinction event that snuffed the dinosaurs. Horseshoe crabs survive today with minimal change over the last 450 million years. A living fossil is a term for that which, one, exhibits notable longevity, two, demonstrates little morphological divergence and low morphological diversity within its group, and three, exhibits little taxonomic diversity, while a Lazarus taxon is that which suddenly reappears, either in the fossil record or in nature, i.e., as if the fossil had come to life again, therefore the name Lazarus. So why did man need to exist? Crocodiles and horseshoe crabs, stupid as they are, that is in comparison to most, not all people, still survive today. So why didn't they just evolve into undersea computer programmers and Catholic apologists, given the endless expanse of ocean resources? Water itself provides the nutrients, oxygen, power to bioluminous for night lights, and sound carries further in water. Whales can communicate to other whales that are continents away. Survival on land is more difficult and hostile to life. That being the case, why didn't humans just develop gills and take to the water? There's much more of it. In fact, water comprises a massive 71% of the Earth's surface, and the oceans hold about 96.5% of Earth's water. Note that water also exists in the air as vapor, in the ground, in aquifers, in rivers, lakes, ice caps, and glaciers. So would the universe really suffer if we infinitesimally small human critters didn't exist? Well, as the human ego seemingly knows no bounds, many would argue that it would. But human reason tells us otherwise. Given the expanse of the infinite universe in comparison and scientifically speaking, we humans are, well, utterly pointless. And you know it. A thousand lifetimes could not even be seen on a Catholic, I mean, universal timeline. But here we are, nevertheless, against all odds and logical probabilities. Humbled yet? We humans are unique in that, should we choose to, we can contemplate our own existence and purpose within the grand scheme of things. Humans can choose to do good or something less. So why does a creature capable of great good or immense destruction far beyond itself even exist? What answer does your innately human reasoning give you? Pure luck, maybe? A fluke? Think the whole grand plan is discoverable by us mere little bipeds running around on this microscopic speck called Earth? Talk about puffed. Yet, as infinitely strange as it is wonderful, this infinite, all-knowing, master igniter creator of the grand template chose to reveal himself, his plan, and purpose for us while respecting our free will to reject it all. Call the process what you will, be it evolution, natural selection, hypersea, intelligent design, or extraterrestrial invasion. But here we are, reasoning creatures that choose of our own free will to strive for something greater or fatally less, as, as in against our own natural survival instincts regarding ourselves and others. So Christianity, finding fullness in the Roman Catholic Church, offers the most logical answers to it all. The purpose of suffering and the sanity of hope, the consequence of disorder and the glory in wisdom, and most significantly, that there truly is life after death. Frail and broken as we are, even within the church herself, 
the master igniter has gradually revealed the big idea behind the Big Bang. This big idea is one reason I'm Catholic over anything else, as will be demonstrated within the course of this study. So this was a lot to chew on. So ponder these thoughts on life after death and the grand plan, and we'll pick up from here with what Christ has brought us. You might be surprised what you learn. Till then, I'll leave you with Einstein's theory, E equals MC squared, in its new and delightfully perfected form. Science, as you may know from school, understands the equation as energy, that is, units of energy, equals m, units of mass, times c squared, that is, the speed of light, or c squared, or rather, multiplied by itself. So essentially, what the equation is saying is that for a specific amount of mass in kilograms, if you multiply it by the speed of light squared, you get its energy equivalent, which is measured in joules. And a joule, by the way, of energy is equal to the force used to move a specific object one meter in the same direction as the force. So perfected, I humbly submit, E for energy now represents eternal energy, the true jewel, so to speak, of energy that's equal to the force as emanates from Christ that is used to move a specific object, and in this case now a person, in the same direction as the force, which is now Christ. This equals mass, which represents the mass of the specified object, representing now the Eucharist of the Mass, where we Catholics receive this specified object, now perfected in the specified person of Christ, which, when measured in the standard kilograms or kilo, meaning thousand, the Hebrew number for infinity, multiplied, like the loaves and fishes, like the miraculous wine at the Cana wedding, by C, the Christ, speed of light, or light of the world squared, that is, multiplied by, but now also through him, in him, and with him himself. Pretty cool, huh? Wrap your head around that one. You might have to watch this a few times. <laughs> So by the way, in a vacuum, light moves at 186,282 miles per second. So in science, of course, we utilize the International System of Units, or SI for short. Therefore, we use meters and kilometers as opposed to, say, feet and miles. So when doing our calculations for light, we use, as shown here, a shorthand way of expressing 300 million, which is a nice round Trinitarian number three, followed by eight, the divine number zeros. So in 2015, a physics post on university.com from Joshua Carroll demonstrates E equals MC squared in human terms, literally. He converts his 190 pound body weight into SI units, and plugs his calculated mass into the equation. In so doing, we find that the energy that resides in Joshua, which is actually Hebrew for Jesus, as well as the average human person, is roughly the equivalence of, get this, 1.86 million kilotons of TNT worth of energy. Well, to put that in perspective, in World War II, the bomb that leveled the city of Nagasaki in seconds was approximately only 21 kilotons of explosives. In comparison, Joshua, being a human being, has 88,403 times more explosive energy in him than the bomb that destroyed an entire city. And that goes for you and every human being. Joshua jokes, so, 
When you hear someone tell you that you've got real potential, just reply, you have no idea. So I'll leave you with that fuel for thought to spark some new insights, and we'll see you in the next segment. God bless. Thank you.